uh, when I do recording in class, it sounds a little better than the built-in Mac mic. Okay, so I'll have like a like a mic mic. Uh, and I'm uh, I submitted the paperwork today, so hopefully we get that this semester, so we can get better audio on my recordings. Uh, in this case, I'm going to start with a single view right here. Next, and uh, uh, we're just practicing the UI. I don't know if they tell us the, they're not even telling you to start anything. They're just telling you. So this is just practice. And then um, just find a place to put it. And we're just practicing. So again, none of this is really important. I don't really care about device for this demo. All I'm going to do is talk about all the different pieces that we have over here. So I'm just going to click on a main storyboard and we're going to talk about them. So the first one they, they want you to, to look at is the actual view itself uh, on page 190 and that is where your views are often nested as the previous view hierarchy diagram. The view is contains in another view is called the child view. A view that contains one or more views is called a parent view. In this example each, each cell in the list is a child view of the table view. Each cell is a parent of three views, a label that displays a city name, another label that displays how the time zones are related and an image view that displays an image of a clock. And then we're talking about the screen that was previous. To display a view on screen, you need to give it a frame which consists of the size and position add to the view hierarchy within the view is a bounds. A view is transparent by default. You'll also need to set a background color and property. So what they're talking about there on page 90 in the information is when you just click right here, boom, you have a view right there. And it says view right here. Again, you also have the safe area, which then has the, the little bar that goes across the top. We've already talked about that. That has your, um, you know, your cell phone information. See right here. And so you got a view and a safe view. Uh, under view, though, you have all these options here. This is where we can set a background color right here. Uh, when you're choosing colors, you can um, you use your dials. You got your these, 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 these. We've already looked at some of those. So you can choose a background color of that view. Um, tag, inside the tag itself is going to tell you the hierarchical of the um, views. Um, so like again, if you drag a uh, image view, it's going to be above this. So if we look at the tag up there, up there in the upper corner, notice it says zero. It's on the bottom. Okay. So actually you can have things that have a higher goal. So the tag integer that you can use to identify view objects. So this is a zero um, object, usually at the bottom, I'm assuming. Uh, the other one, of course, is alpha. Um, the alpha can be used for transparency of the view. Maybe there's something underneath it. I don't know. Again, we change the background color as well. And then um, the position is the position of the view on screen. Uh, again, the view is right in the center. And then size is width is one and one. I guess it, it stretches to fit the entire frame. So you have a stretching option down here. So this is a different type of view. Of view. Next, take a look at some of the most common view defined in UI Kit. This section covers some common views you'll work with in UI View. As you learn about the different views, think about apps you use and which views you might be used to create these interfaces. Of course, the first one is the UI Label, which we've already looked at and we've already seen how to use that already. But let's just practice it real quick. Again, a label. Uh, we use extensively um, just a simple label goes on the screen uh, again we talked about this briefly when we were doing the um, the hello uh, hello app in that you can have multiple lines right here so if remember we were talking about how you can have um, more than one line so if you're going along and you're typing along you know, my person was Nathan Explosion. Nathan Explosion. And notice it's going and going and going and going and going. But I could come over here and change the number of lines. Oh, I gotta select it. Oh, it should wrap. Oh, you gotta make it smaller. 
I know it's not the easiest thing to do, but if you make it smaller, it should wrap. So again, it's the size of the box. Um, text, and we're just going to go through again. So it's displayed on label. They also have attributed text. Um, I, I was trying to figure out the difference between it, but I haven't found an answer to that yet. Does anybody know what the difference is between text and attributed? thinking about it and I couldn't come up with an answer. So I, I will figure that out. Plain text. Ah, uh, lines right here. So if you have a label and you want it to be multiple lines, you can do that. Later on we're going to use text area or well in in I was thinking in HTML text area, but they do have a text area here as well. Uh, text field and, and that has multiple lines as well. Um, again, here's multiple lines. You got your center align, right align, justified, and so on. Okay, and here's the number of lines. Um, uh, font we already kind of know. Uh, I would stick with the dynamic fonts for now. Um, a little bit later. I, I will talk about uh, fonts and how we can use specific fonts and how to package them with your app. So if you use special fonts in your um, app, you need to kind of package it with the app so it goes along with it. Okay, that's it's kind of a, let's say, delivery kind of con. It's almost like when you're doing, you know, like if you use a special font and you're going to take it to a print house, right? And you have something printed at, I don't know, Kinko's or wherever and they don't have the specific font that you used, you would need to take the font suitcase with you, right? You can use crazy fonts in your, in your app if you want, but again, you would need to package the font with it. So there's a same kind of concept is what I'm trying to say. Um, raw, dynamic, automatically adjust fonts, number of lines we talked about, alignment, and so on. So that was on page uh, 191. So we have some text. Uh, they also talk about in this one the UI view, which is the image view. Image view, I meant. So if you haven't, we've used the image view before. We put that on. Again, let's just briefly go over those options there. Uh, to choose your image, it's this one at the top up here. But of course, where do I put my image? We've already learned that. You put it in the assets window right here. And uh, I know we haven't gone over doing the different versions for uh, the different uh, uh, phones. But again, you could have up to three different versions. So in this case, um, image view is, is a way to put image on. And we learned how to put the image in there, how you can stretch it in there, or how you can crop it in there. Do you remember doing that? Okay, so there's different options for your image in there, right here, where it says content, scale the fill, fill aspect, and redraw, and all these right here. If you don't remember, let me just bring an image in real quick, and we'll just go over that one more time. Uh, oh, that's a video. Do I have an image? Uh, bees collecting pollen. There we go. And a flower. There we go. We'll bring some of that in there. So again, you do have one, two, three for each image so that it, it is prepared for every device. Uh, again, in your image view, you can choose an image and then you have your scale, fit, aspect ratio, aspect fill, redraw, center, top, bottom, and so on. So these are common ones. In addition, uh, later on we'll use an actual uh, grid of images. So let's just say that you are, um, think, think of your, um, there is down here a, a grid of images. Is it under image? Um, I think it's under table. View image control manages image views. Uh, which one am I looking for? Stack, image view, collection view, display data in a collection of cells. Uh, you can use this, I believe it's this one, to, to have a collection of images in a grid type. I think this is the one I was using for that. Maybe this one as well. 
but there, there's ways to have a collection of images together. In addition, they also have the, the, the gestures in here and so on. Yeah, okay. So that was under image view. They also talk about um, text view next on page 192. We haven't really used that. We've been pretty much using labels and um, labels and and things, but uh, they have a text view. And kind of what's the difference between a text view and the label is, you know, labels would be used for more of, of there, where this text view allows you to have more of a scroll bar, I guess is what the main goal would be. A text view allows you to enter content into your app. The text view accepts and displays multiple lines of text, which is support for scrolling and editing. So you would use this for, um, you know, either, I, I, I think, you know, I'm thinking of it scrolling, where you have a lot of text you want to scroll within the window, almost like the iframe, I'm, I'm assuming, right? You guys think of your code for HTML, you use an iframe to put something in from somewhere, right? And that iframe can have a scroll view, scroll option to the iframe, right? So I'm assuming this is more like that. So it has the same characteristics. You got text, you have default, font, and so on. Um, oh, you got a whole bunch of other options here. Flight number, shipment tracking, calendar event, link, phone number, address, and so on. A bunch of input options as well. Scroll options. Scale options. Same kind of options you would have. A scroll view allows the user to see content that runs beyond the boundaries of a view. You can typically use a scroll view when the information you want to display is larger than the device screen. When the user interacts with a scroll view, a vertical and horizontal scroll indicates briefly appears to indicate there's more content. So um, uh, I guess we can put an image out there. Let me... Um, let me find a bigger image. Let's find a big image. Oh, these are big. Ooh, that's a big image. Let's see if we can make that scroll. Oh. Where's my... Hold on. Really? There we go. Okay, so uh, most likely this image, which is one megabyte, is going to be bigger than my viewable area. So I'm, I'm going to try the scroll view. Oh, I don't know where it happened to my storyboard. It's kind of like that. So let's try the scroll view. Again, there is a, um, I don't know how to put my image in there. Scroll view image. I guess you would have to put an image in there. As a scroll view allows users to see content that runs beyond the boundaries of the view. You typically use a scroll view when the information you want to display is larger than the device's screen. When the user interacts with the scroll view, a vertical or horizontal scroll indicates briefly appear to indicate there's more content below. Is that how big it is? I don't know. This is the first time I'm trying this option right here. I'm going to try and put an image in there. Let's see. Let me run it.
No. I don't know how to use the scroll wheel. I'll have to try and learn that. I don't know, I haven't tried that. So, I, I'm not sure about how to use that. But let's move on. So let's try the uh, table view on page 194. So uh, the table view is going to be important and it's probably one of the most important ways to build apps if you are going to have things in a list uh, when we go to making the national park one which we'll do after we're going to do this after we're done with the apple falling from the tree we're going to do a, a table view um, again it's right here on page 194 it's called table view So there's different types of table options. Again, displays data in a list of plain se se select or se sectioned or grouped rows. So the table view is table view presents data in a single scrollable column of rows and sections, allowing users to navigate easily through the groups of information. Table views are excellent format for displaying and editing hierarchy list of information. For example, the mail app uses table view to display email messages in the user's inbox, and the message app uses a table view to display messages threads organized by content. So we've all used those probably before. Um, basically, the table view, you, you can customize the look and feel of it, as well as the, the rows and cells that display. So if you want to try, again, it's called table view. You just drag it out. It kind of makes a box. You can adjust the size of it as well. If I can move my windows around here. Um, through programming, uh, or not through, through the, the constraints, I would probably do it with uh, zero, zero, and height, zero, zero as well. So by default, if you want the table view to be the entire document, the key here would be to you know go to your constraints and put zero, 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 and then say um, add constraints, and it fills the screen basically with your table view. Once you have your table, and of course it doesn't go into the um, the safe area up there. Uh, you notice my color did though. Did you see my background color did go into my safe area there? So. Again, mostly when we're using the table view, I kind of stretch it to fit the entire screen. Easy way to stretch it to fit the entire screen is to go into constraints and put 0, 0, 0, 0 for your constraints, which we've already looked at last week. And now my table view is there and for the whole um, piece. And you can actually go and put table cells inside that as well. And you'll start putting table cells in there. Uh, through programming, we can add more cells or remove cells. You don't necessarily, you know, what I'm trying to say is you don't necessarily have to drag a cell out for each one. See how I can drag a cell? Look at it already. It's starting to build in. And, of course, you can have some data here, some data here, some data there. Okay? And so, again, it's, it's, it's a great way of organizing your content into a list like this. Um, in addition, in the cell, you can have all the different parts. You can have an image in your cell. Um, you can have text in a cell. And you can have actions in a cell. You can have icons in the cell. So we're actually going to have like three different things in there. Uh, there's a couple ways we'll make this. Uh, one way for the National Park app, we'll actually have just the image be the whole cell. And it will actually have text over top of it. So it says camping. And we'll have like an image of a campground on there. And it'll say camping in that. And we could, or another way we're going to do a layout as well is we'll have a thumbnail or icon here. It could be a photo. It could be there. And it could say camping there. Then you can have a gesture here. It could be an arrow or something that indicates, hey, this is something you can click on. So you can have icons in there as well. So this is a great way of organizing. This is how many, many apps are organized inside of, of Xcode by using the table view in it there. Then, like I said, you, you don't need to drag these cells out like I was doing. You can dynamically generate them through programming. You just add a new cell and remove a cell through programming instead of dragging out.
it'll be, we call that a dynamic table. So that's the term for where you're programming the cells. I, but again, you could just drag one out if you want. See that? I could just keep building one like that. Or you can dynamically uh, generate the cells through programming. Uh, again, I listed the chapter for that if you want to go look. It's a little bit later, I think it's, uh, um, but I will um, make sure you, you know what page it's on and you can try that yourself when you, when you have extra time. I know we, know we never have extra time. Okay, so uh, that is quite useful. That was on page 195. And then, uh, of course, the other one is a very useful one. Also, another way of building interfaces. And let me delete all this um, stuff. There we go. Notice how they were all inside the table view. Let me undo that for a moment. Uh, notice, see the table view right here? And under the table view, we have content, 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 content. Each one was a different cell but there was one large table view with the constraints on it. So all the pieces inside follow the constraints of the main table view, right? Okay, let, let me delete that. Uh, the other one is the UI, the, a UI a toolbar usually appears at the bottom of the screen and displays one or more buttons called bar button items. Users can select a button or tool to perform an action within the given view. Again, it's the uh, toolbar. That is another very useful way of putting an app on there. You'll notice you can put it at the bottom, which is the most common way of putting a toolbar down there. Um, you can put a toolbar anywhere, though, if you want. want. It's usually, um, uh, you know, a lot of the apps you see can have the, the toolbar um, along the bottom. Um, some of the, you know, you can have them at the top, too. I've seen apps like that. Okay, a toolbar usually appears at the bottom of the screen, though. Like they said, uh, a lot of apps uh, you will have. Uh, one app has a toolbar at the bottom. I can't think right now. Uh, the music app, right? Doesn't the music app have a toolbar at the bottom? And you can customize your own icons in that toolbar. I know they have default icons that you can see there with the um, and these. These are common icons that you can see there on page 195, of course, the um, right one or the um, back one or the, um, the one that used to, to send a message, a folder to store something or the trash can. But you can make your own icons and put them in there. Uh, the best uh, format to make those icons would be uh, the either, I, I haven't really tried to make an icon in PDF because I've been mostly using PNG but to make your own icons within a toolbar you can use a PNG file. The beauty of the PNG and if you haven't used the PNG is that it has an alpha or a transparent area so it's not a square, right? A JPEG doesn't have a transparent area so that means that it's kind of square. Whereas if you use PNG it can have a transparency around the outside so that the background color can come through. So we'll mostly be using PNGs, especially when we do an animation example. Uh, let's move on. Uh, you're going to configure your toolbar itself or the bar items. It displays each item consists of a title and an image and can be enabled or disabled program programmably. So um, I haven't really looked at where do I have it selected. I know I've made my own icons before, I just can't remember how to do it in the toolbar. There's the item. Here it is, item one. You can have an image, so we can put our B in there. And um, and we can give it a name. This is going to be uh, uh, pollen. Pollen? Pollen. Okay, and then um, to add a new item, I said blue. Thought it was an image. Because uh, it wants an icon. Okay, I'll ha I'll, I have some demos of that I've done in the past. Okay, navigational bars are very common as well. That's on page 196. Use navigational bars to present your app's primary content in an organized way. You can use it, use you, one that you hope will be intuitive to the user. 
Navigation bars are typically displayed at the top of the screen with the bar button navigation through a hierarchy of screens. They most likely include a back button, a title, and a forward button. So again, uh, it's called navigation bar. Uh, you got both navigation controller and navigation bar. The navigation controller, I believe, is just a little arrow. Oh no, that's oh that's when you go from one screen to the other. This is the control bar. And you can link it and connect it to do you remember how we were connecting um buttons to go from one screen to the other? The navigational bar can be programmed that way. Oh, here's the tab bar at the bottom. Tab bars are the common ones. That's on page 197. Actually, the tab bar is its own controller. Let me do that again. So, do you remember, um, let me zoom out here for just a minute if I could. How do I zoom out? Do they have a zoom? Use the keyboard commands. I'm going to make it smaller. How do I zoom? Oh, there it is. Thank you. I know. I, I struggle because I, I, I my screen is very small. Okay, so um, do you know? Do you remember when we uh, start at the very beginning and we say single view, right? Uh, when we're making it there. Well, if you're going to use the tab uh, bar, you can use the tab controller, and so you build your whole app not this way with this view here. Okay, I'm going to delete that view. You see, I just deleted it, and you can use the whole tab controller here like this. And what it does is it, it builds your app from the ground up. So I remove that other one, that single view that we had before. And in fact, when you start at the beginning, it gives you an option to start with the tab view instead of the single view. Okay, so you can even when you start with a new project. So when you're starting with a new project, when you go new new project, you should have a tabbed base here, tabbed app right here. So Tabbed app is what I'm demonstrating right here. So uh, you can, or you could just do what I just did was delete the single view that I, I selected it and just hit the delete key and I drag the tab bar controller on. This is the same idea. It starts with a app that you see here which has two icons at the bottom and those icons then go from one screen to the other and then there's actually an automatically back button that shows up that goes back. Okay, so this is a very quick, easy way to build an app using the tabbed bar at the bottom here. And it already has these programmed in. You can add more um, tabbed view controller. You can, you can add more and so on. So that was on the page of 197. Um, You can add a tab view controller. You already have one, it's right there. Okay, so that's a different type of way of building an app. Very, um, the advantage of using that is you can actually scroll in here and this stays on the screen all the time. Right, so you can have content that's in here that can scroll up and down and the bar always stays in the same spot at the bottom. So this is a very uh, useful way. Then they uh, um, talk about on page, um, let me zoom in here. Now we can zoom back in. Then they talk about um, controls. And those controls are the ones that we uh, primarily use, like a button. You can drag a button on the screen we've been using. Oh, I guess we have to use the tab controller. I could put it in the sub bar over here. 
sub view button. So we can put a button there. And we've already gone over some of the things you can do with a button. The primary control event is triggered by user releasing a button after tapping it. So um, today we'll look a little bit about the different um, options for a button or the different um, gestures. By default, it has when you tap and release the button is where the action is triggered. But you can also do other ways of doing that. And you've probably noticed when we bring up our our, our programming. That's not the one I wanted. So let me go back to my single view. It's going to get confusing if I don't. I'm going to go back to my single view. And I was doing a button. Again, user uh, devices is init initiate a control event with the tap of a button. When you set a up, when you set up a button, you give it a title or an image that conveys what the button will do when tapping. The appearance of the button changes with different states of being tapped, tapping down and lifting up. The primary controls event is triggered when the user releases a button after tapping it. Buttons can be can also execute code at different stages of a tap, such as when the user first touches the button, holds down the button, or cancels the tap by dragging its finger outside the frame of the button before lifting their finger. So there's a lot of little gestures in there. Uh, where do those gestures come in is where um, when you bring up your code, right? And those different gestures for your button, of course, is when you're using the uh, control click to add an action. So um, today we're going to do a lot of different actions as well as outlets. How we do that, of course, is by holding the control key down and dragging into our code view here. And you'll notice you have your outlet, your action here. These are the most common action primarily for buttons because we're trying to do things like that. Um, where you do that is you got your any uh, or it's a button right there and then here's the different touch events right here did end on exit editing change edited editing did begin editing did end primary action trigger touch cancel touch down touch down repeat touch drag enter touch drag exit touch drag inside touch drag the default is touch up inside which means basically you touched and it'll trigger when you let your finger up that's the default one that's in there um, so they talk about that a little bit. Uh, segmenting controls is a horizontal set of multiple segments. Each set segment functions as a discrete button, allowing the user to choose from a limited compact set of functions. This example from the App Store allows the user to change the top chart view with three choices, paid apps, free apps, and top grossing. So uh, segmented controls. Um, I didn't want to. I'm going to cancel that right now. I just was pointing out where that was at. That's usually when you're when you're making an uh, uh, an action when you're dragging in the code is where you got the. Uh, this one right here. Yeah. I clicked on the, the the two circles. The two circles up here, right here. So again, those options for the different tapping is when you put the action over here. I'm holding the control key down, putting our action in there, and again it was um, action action is when you're doing something with it. Outlet is when you want to change the uh, content of it. It's an outlet. So the difference between these ones. Again, these are the different touching options there. And if it's a button, you can tell it to be a UI button there. Um, so I'm going to cancel that for now. Uh, let's just keep going through this real quick here. Uh, we already did segmented. Segmented controls. Again, you can have more than one in there. Um, so this could be a, kind of a button that actually is kind of a bar almost. Uh, their example on page 200 in the book has paid, free, and top grossing. Notice how you have an option for segments here. So if I want more than one, I can make it bigger. Here we go. So let's say, uh, I'm sorry. I, and let me close this. I don't, I don't want the, uh, how do I close it? I thought I could just tap on it. Close the X. There we go. Again, this is called segmented controls. It's um, let me make this bigger. Uh, I guess I could just go 
make it zero zero. Here, oops, no, not that one. There we go. Zero, zero. There we go. It's okay if it's red there for now. It's just telling you, you know, it doesn't know where it is in space. Whatever. So again, you have segments right here. So this is called a segment controller. It's kind of like a navigational bar almost. You see that there? So when a person touches on a segment, it can actually do something. Um, they have a, their examples paid, free, and top grossing. And so, um, and you can change the titles there. Second, third, what do we want to call the third one? Sleep. There we go. Oh, that was two. Oh, yeah, that was three because it starts. Oh, no, it didn't put it in there. I'm going to hit return. Sleep. And then last one. What do you want to put in there? What do we, want? we like to sleep? What else do we like to do? Eat. Okay, so again, um, this is called segmented controls. It's another way of adding content. Segment controls execute code when the, the controls value changes. The value represents each segment of the control is selected. And of course, it has a default one, which is the first one. Uh, then they also have text fields. Text fields allow the user to input a single line of text into an app. You'll use them to gather small amounts of text to perform some actions based on that. That was on page 200. Again, we kind of talked about that already. Uh, the last one would be a slider. Again, a slider is basically what it says. It's, it's a way of the user sliding content. Um, you can control and change the, the um, how it's programmed is by um, the actual scale. There's a scale that goes from you know, one side to the other. And depending upon when you're dragging it, will we'll change. Great for volume control. We'll do an example for volume control. So, uh, you know, it's by default in the center there, but you can start it on one side or the other. Um, again, the, the, their example in the book is with the uh, light, you know, to change the light. But um, again, a slider is a draggable feature. Oof. Look, I put my, my tab thing at the top. Okay, so that was on page 201. Um, and then switches. Uh, switches is kind of like an on off. Nope, switch, switch, no, Swiss, switch, yes. Oh, there it is, switch. Switch is great if you want to turn something on and off. Basically, is on. In a, so, in the programming for this, it's very easy to program a switch. Great for doing something that's going to be on or off. And that actually, the code is that is on or is off. Is on or is off, and we'll do an example of that in a couple minutes. We're gonna we're gonna try that actually, um, and there you go. There's a default value for it right here. See where it says state. You can say off or on default value. So if you want somebody to turn something off, maybe it's off at the beginning, and you want them to turn it on. Maybe you know turning on something. I don't know. I. Um, Next one they have in there is on page 203 is the date picker. So the date picker is very useful because that is the common way that Apple brings up the date. We also use that in what? Remember the jQuery date picker? We do remember the jQuery date picker, I hope, from, from our jQuery days. If you did any coding with JavaScript or jQuery, the picker was like that. So again, it's very default, very simple. Um, Drag your date picker in there. Okay. Now this isn't the best, although a lot of, lot of, a lot of, you know, this is great for just a single date. But what if you wanted to do multiple dates, like a um, hotel or something like that? Usually the calendar is much better. And there are some options to um, program a calendar. Date picker provides straightforward interface for managing date and time selections. Allows you to just specify a particular date quick quickly and efficiently. And so you can see you can customize it over here and so on.
Page 204, they also talk about the view controller. UI kit defines a special class that controls a view, set up child views, controls what they display and correspond to user action. This class is called the view controller. Most common, each screen in an app is represented by a scene in the storyboard, and each scene is a storyboard associated with the subclass UI view controller. The associated view controller subclass defined by Swift file that holds all the logic and controls of the scene. Each UI controller class has a view property that represents the parent view of the scene. Think back to the light project you built in the first unit. The project had a single storyboard with a single scene. The scene was linked to the UI view controller subclass called view UI controller. Light was toggled by adjusting the view property of the view controller. That view property is the same instance of UI view as the parent view of the scene of the storyboard. When you add a button to the scene, the button became the child view of the scene main view. When you wired up actions and outlets, you link them to the view controller Swift file, which defines the view controller for that scene. Um, basically, they're just talking about the different uh, view controllers. You can add more, so I can add another view. And so, notice we have one view controller. I can actually add another one, and so on. We've we've seen that already. So we can have multiple view controllers and you can have as many as you want each one can have its own swift file as well or they can share as they can share it, it's a way that you it's just the way when we get to doing the apple uh, project we'll actually have multiple swift files and not everything will be in one swift file we'll actually make a different swift file just like they said in this in this reading right here where you can have the logic for the um, information in one swift file and then the view part in another Swift file. Now, d by default, you'll notice you have the view here, right? We've been using the view controller and things like that, I'm trying to um, wrap up here um, what they were just talking about. Uh, but this is where we put the content for uh, what you see in the interface, but it's really not the best place to put the logic or programming um, for uh, the logic of your project. So when we get to doing the Apple project, we'll actually make a new Swift file. That Swift file then will be used and we'll put the programming in there that is not necessarily the stuff you see on the screen, but it's the, the, the logic behind the program. So you, we'll actually make a new Swift file uh, by going under new, um, what am I saying, new file. And then you'll say, uh, what kind of file do you want? We want a Swift file. See that right there? And then we'll say next. And uh, uh, in the Apple project, I can't remember what we call it. Uh, we'll just call it some file. And then hit create. And notice it shows up over here. When we do that, uh, again, uh, this is where we put our logic or, or of our app in a separate file there. The view controller. Swift is the stuff you put on the screen. Okay, this is where we'll connect. So keep in mind you'll be building multiple programming files, Swift files like that, and you add them to your program. That's kind of what they were saying here at the end of this chapter here. Um, and then they have some things you can practice. Um, but let's move on. Uh, next thing I'm going to go over is uh, lesson 2.8, and that's displaying data. Was that, oh no, we already did, did we do that one? Did. Yeah, we did that one. I'm going to move on, sorry. We did that with, and you can go back and practice that. That's what you're supposed to turn in your Hello app. Let's go to 2.9. That is the one I want to really go over right now. That's the actions and how to program the actions, right? We're going to have a lot of taps, a lot of clicks, and we want to change text within a box. You want to be able to change the label. So when we get to the, uh, when we get to doing the Apple project, we're going to have a, a label that's going to have how many times you tried and lost and how many times you won, right? In addition, you're going to have a label that puts the letters into that. You can guess the correct letter and some things in there. So we need to learn how to adjust labels to put data in, okay? As well as, so that's what this chapter goes over. So. Again, I'm going to go over lesson 2.9, and then we'll get right into the Apple. If we have time today, we'll even start that. Okay? So let's try and get through this right now. I don't know. We're running out of time already. But these concepts are important for you to do the Apple thing. So 
let's go over uh, again. I'm just going to use a single view. Um, and this is going to be a, um, I don't know what we're calling this. What do they call it in here? Do, they get, do we have to give it a name? I don't know. Common input controls. Common input controls. Again, we click on the main storyboard here. Open main storyboard, then find the button object in the object library. And we're going to put a button on the screen. And we put a button on the screen. Let's not worry about position right now. We, you've learned about that, and hopefully you're practicing how to position things. You saw when I would put the table view in there, how I made the table view the whole screen, right? Just go to constraints and put 000. If you want something to fill the screen, that's the easiest way, and it's going to be fill in the screen no matter what view you're in, rotating landscape, and so on, right? So keep that in mind, a great way of, of, of doing that. When we did the table view. Okay, on page uh, 223, um, again, we're going to bring up the Swift button here. I'm going to move my windows over a little bit. I don't need so much space on here. I don't need so much space right Can I move that? There we go. Move that over, and I'm going to click on this guy right here. So I have my button and my uh, UI control. So we just talked about that again. This view controller Swift right here is the options that you see on the screen but not necessarily. I'm going to put the logic, again, the logic of my app. I can make a new Swift file. That's what I was just talking about before. Again, most of the things are under this view controller Swift right here. You can bring that up by clicking the little, uh, looks like the Olympic uh, things, right? The little circles, right? Olympics is over. Yes. I think, I think every, every country did pretty well, right? I don't know. U.S. won at curling, didn't it? So here we want to talk about the action. So again, to notice uh, we've already done this a couple times. We're practicing today. Make sure you know where to put your stuff in here. Most of the stuff we put in is going to be in this area here. Why is that? Well, we're trying to, um, once the view has been loaded, we want to do something. So after the view has been loaded, we're waiting for somebody to touch that button, right? So I'm going to do an out or an action. So I'm going to select it, hold the control key down, and I'm going to drag down here, right here, right? So we've already done this before. We're just practicing. We're just going through the options again. And when I release my mouse, it comes up with this option right here. Now this is not going to be an outlet. It's going to be an action. Again, an outlet is if you want to 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 change something maybe or, or have it um, do something where an action is if you're touching it or doing something like that with it. Most buttons would be an action because you're going to touch it. And we already looked at that. If you go there, we're going to go to action right there. Uh, where is the object? Well, it's inside the view controller, right? There you go. And you can give it a name. Um, in this case, you can call it button tapped is what they, they it inside there so you can call it button tapped if you want. Notice how they name it as well if you type in button tapped with a capital T, T-A-P-P-E-D, button tapped where you lowercase this and uppercase that. Make sure you name it and it gives it a clue on what it does so uh, of course we're tapping the button. Um, down here, at most natural time, a button is actually code when the user taps and releases the touch within the bounds of that. That's why touch up inside is the default. We just talked about that right here. Touch up inside. Uh, type is any and UI button. It doesn't really um, matter much. Uh, any is just, I you know, I'm not really sure exactly why to change that at this point. Again, here's all your list. We already looked at that. Um, touch up inside is the default, um, but also you have um, drag inside, drag outside, drag exit, drag. So things that you can move it around on the screen if you wanted to connect with something. Think of games, right? You're, you're often gesturing and pushing things together in games, right? Then if you hit connect, It'll come up with the code. Again, here's the action. 
one thing to keep in mind is if you notice how do you know that this button is connected to something? You have the little target icon over here. Do you see the little target icon? And when I roll my mouse over it, notice how it, it has a little plus that goes over there. So when we get to doing the Apple one, we're going to have four different things that are connected to our code. We're going to have the Apple tree, two labels, and then each letter. Each letter in the Apple will have a connection. So we'll have four of these four of them in the Apple one, and to remember and see which one is connected to what, you go over here, you put your cursor at the little target icon, it turns a little plus, it shows you what it's connected to. Okay, so that, that'll help you. Again, I already did all those connections for you. So I did that for you. So I will talk about it, and I'll show you how to do it once, but uh, you're not going to want to sit there and drag. It took me a long time to do that. Because you have to actually sit with each letter and drag it from here to there. See that? That's how you connect it. So this one's already connected, right? But what if you wanted to connect this to another button? So I can drag another button on here and say, we could call that. Oh, another button. Let's just do this for an example. So I have another button there. If I want to connect this to that as well, I can actually do that. Do you see that right there? Okay, and so now this, all this, when this is triggered, is actually both of these, both of these. And if I roll my mouse over, notice how both of them show up like that. Okay, so you can drag these to multiple options here so that uh, you can do something with them. Uh, basically how it works with the Apple one is that you want to be able to take the letter that they click on and use that letter somewhere else. And so in the code, they click on Whatever letter they click on, it takes that letter from there and puts it into the, and does some logic testing. Hey, is it the word? Yes or no? It's not the word, then boom, the apple falls off the tree or whatever, and so on. What feature are you using that to connect? Uh, to connect them, yeah. you uh, use the plus here. See how when I roll over? See how when I roll over? So I can put another button out there. Right there, another button. And I want this to be connected to that as well. Th these two are already connected to this. I put my cursor over, I hold the mouse down, and I drag over top like that. Uh, so now, control, no, you don't have to control drag. Now all three of these are connected together. How you know that is if you roll your mouse over, the little plus, you'll see they all show up. Okay, so that's how you can connect multiple ones to that one action. They all have the same action is what I'm trying to say. They're all touching button tapped. They're all going to be button tapped. If you read the code here, you can see it. There. Each, no matter if you click here, it's going to be button tapped. Click here, it's still button tapped. If you click there, it's still button tapped. They're all button tapped. Okay, I'm going to move on. Let me delete this. That's not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to point that out right there. Okay, let's move on. Um, on page 225, you kind of get the idea, was the button tapped? You can put inside your logic here, if you want, print um, button was tapped, like that. And then they tell you, oh, no. Then if I preview my my project here, this is on page 225. If I click on my button tap, you'll notice, and if I quit my simulator here, you'll see the console comes up and says, hey, button was tapped. Right. Okay, so that's what they're talking about on 225. Let's move on. They talk about switches, and this is what I was talking about earlier. You could drag a switch on there. Uh, switch is a very simple kind of um, option. You do the same thing as you did with the other one. Um, I could drag it from here to uh, here. Same thing, you get an outlet or an action. If you want them to actually um, do an action where they're pushing it, you're going to use action. In the action, you can give it a name. Uh, in the book, they tell you to, to, to they, they tell you to give it a name of anything. I don't know if they tell you to give it a name. Switch. 
switch to toggle. Switch to toggle. I'm, I'm on, I guess I'm on the wrong. 227. Oh, I have to go to the next page. Okay, there we go. Switch. Remember, toggle would be capital T, right? Toggled with a D. And then uh, they want you to change the type here instead of any to a UI switch. And then uh, they put some if statement in there. This is the same. This is a sender is fine. All these are okay right there. Again, we're in the view controller. We hit connect. And then if you want to be able to test that if it's doing its thing, you can put an if statement in there. You know, if sender dot is on. Oh, capital O for that. On. And then they got print the switch is on else. Oh, we got to put our um, curly bracket in there. Uh, print. the switch switch T in there is off am I missing a curly bracket yes we want one Again, um, they're basically um, telling you, why am I getting an error message now down here? Only instance method can be tapped, but we delete that. There we go. So it, it's mad. You notice how it was mad because I connected it to two buttons that weren't there anymore. So you got to be very careful. And I ran into that problem as well. I was getting these error messages down here. Okay. And the reason why is I connected that, that action to three buttons. Did you see me do that? Remember that? But then I went and deleted the buttons, but the program still thinks I connected to the three buttons and it started giving me an error. So be very careful. I ran into that a lot. If you connect to a button, you need to somehow, and I, I can't remember how I fixed that. There was a way. I know I fixed it. I just can't remember at this point. It will start coming error messages. So if you just delete something, it still might be connected to That's why it was giving me those errors. I think so. Now, now it's giving me errors down here. We got override. Super cannot be used outside the class. I just put a button on there. What did I do wrong? Can I remove all this? How about if I just delete that? No. Still giving me messages. It's connected. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Do I need another curly bracket? That one goes with this one. No. This one goes with this one. This one goes with this one. What's that? I have too many. No. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Again, they're just. I think the most important thing is is that you see that it, it is on, is on as a word, and then if it's not on, it's going to be off. Basically, that's why there's an if statement. If it's on. Hey, the thing's on. If it's off, it's off. So if we test this one. Where is it at? Where is it? Oh, there we go. And we click it on and off. We should get our message is on, is off, is on, is off in our console. 
So that was that um, page, that page, and then they talk about sliders. We don't have to go over that if you don't want to. Uh, again, the slider is, is quite um, specific. Um, the one that's important, I think, is the actual text and how to change the text. So um, text fields. Text fields allow the user to enter small amount of text, such as entering a username or password. For example, if you use a text field when entering a subject on a new email draft, Add a label and text field to your common controls project and set the label text to the current text in the text field when the user taps and enters or done key on the keyboard, find the text field object and drag it out. So again, uh, let's just do one. I'm going to remove this. I don't want to do, um, I don't know, maybe that'll work. I don't know, maybe they need that. Let me just put it out there. Again, it's text field. Text field. Again, with the text field, you have a box in there. And it's basically a box that you can then go and change with um, text. Uh, using the instance editor, add an action using the primary action trigger event from the text field to the view controller. Use a descriptive name as the keyboard return key tapped and set the sender type to UI text field user action to print in the current text field text of the field. So here we go. We have a text field right here. We can go and put an action in there by again holding the cold control key down and dragging into the uh, UI control just like we did with the button right just like we did with the button just like we did with the, the uh, thing again I'm holding the control key down and dragging in for the text field inside there we can use a um, action I don't want to action what did they say it's, it's using this and add a maximum primary trigger event in the field script in the keyboard turn key give it a name whoosh Keyboard return. Oh, return key. Turn key tapped. Whoosh, that's a long one. And set the field here to UI text field right here. And then, um, you can hit connect so use the action to print the current text of the field there's no text in that field is there there's nothing in there remember that field text and also trigger code when the user edits the content of the field using an assistant editor add an IB action using the editing change control event from the text field to the view controller swift use descriptive names such as the text changed and set the sender type to UI text field use the action to print the current text field in the field <coughs> so I don't know let me try um Let's do the first one. If let text equal sender dot text print text. Let's test. So I hit return. It didn't do anything, did it? Got some errors. Well, we got to do something with the keyboard return key tapped. Now let's try the other one below, number three. Remember that text field can also trigger code when the user edits the content of the field. Using the assistant editor, add a action using editing changed control event from the text field to view controller. 
I don't know, should we add a new one? Let's delete that one. <coughs> oh no, it's text view, text field. Let's add an action. What is it called? Text changed? And then they wanted this to be UI text field editing. What, which one do we want here? Edit changed? Edit, edit changed right there. Edit changed. So the option here is the event is edit change. Editing change? Editing change. Test change, action, editing change, sender, connect. I don't know. Let's try it again. If let text equal sender dot text um, print. text. I don't know. Let's try this one. Oh, no. So again, we have a text field. Let me make it a little bigger so I can see it. Um, we can color it as well. Can we add a background? Oh, that's background image. Is there a way we can color this? There we go. Give my back my text field a thing. Okay, let's test. So as I type in the field, it should print out the text into the um, output. Let's try. So as I type, it starts showing up down there in my console down here so it's recognizing uh, the field that you type in text fields are very flexible and should be configured to best fit the situation they are used in for example you can set the keyboard to display different keys based on whether the user is entering an email address or a URL okay so that was on page uh, and then they go over toggle switching on the next page and then the gestures and so on and then the, the next chapter the 2.1 is a stack view as well we already went over that and then there is the calculator which I'll work on for you and then um, after the calculator is the famous apple pie project so let me go over making our own artwork real quick today before we leave I'll show you how I would make artwork I'm gonna make eight different pieces of artwork so instead of um, let me stop this for a moment right here so and we'll do this as a separate video